Do you remember the first time you ever got behind the wheel of a car? In the 1970s, 1980s, that might have been the turnpike at Kings Island. Hello, everyone. Alongside Ryan Sir, I'm Don Helbig, and this is Tower Topics. Tower Topics is a podcast by Kings Island fans for Kings Island fans, because that's who we are, and that's who we care about. So, Ryan, Sunday did you ever time. ride the turnpike? Yeah, did you ever ride the turnpike? I don't think so. Yeah, because it was gone. You said 1994 was your first you know, time there. No, so I, think it, was, I think it was 92 or 93. Okay. I, I can't. So, I'm going to go ahead and put the photo up on the screen. Like, I got yeah, it. It opened in 1972 with the park. Uh, now, it had uh, been at Coney Island, the turnpike. Very popular ride there. Kind of went around you know, Lake Como along with the train there. Uh, so it was one of the more popular rides at Coney. So, it, you know, opened with the park, uh, 1972 and closing in 1993. It was located in Hanna-Barbera land. Uh, today, that area of the park where this resided is known as Camp Snoopy. It's where like Beagle, Scout Acres, Snoopy Soapbox Racers, Franklin's Flyers are located. So if you're talking about, uh, you know, the, the track and uh, the load station and that uh, all occupied that area. Yeah, uh, so it had some previous names. It was Marathon Turnpike from 72 to 76, just Turnpike from 77 to 78, Speedy Bug from 79 to 80. Was Speedy Bug a sponsorship or was that just a name? Just named it, yeah, Speed Buggy. Oh, sorry. I read it as Speedy Bug, but yeah, Speed Buggy. Uh, Firestone Speed Buggy Turnpike, which was a combination of all the names, I guess, except for Marathon <laughs> in 1981, and then Firestone Wacky Wheels. 1982 to 83. Yeah. And then it just became the turnpike again. But, you know, I mean, back then Firestone, you know, they were a huge sponsor of Kings Island back in the day. So uh, you saw all names associated with some of the rides back then. But um, mm -hmm. Aero Development was the manufacturer model, the turnpike, uh, two person vehicles, you know, themed to sports cars. Uh, the Sunshine Turnpike was a classic turnpike attraction. You know, you see rides like this at uh, Disneyland. Mm -hmm. um, they were kept on the, the path. There was a central like guardrail uh, underneath the car. And uh, when the attraction opened, you know, at that time, it was a pair of intertwined tracks. Yeah, and uh, yeah, uh, and if, so if we look back at the previous picture, was there was this an overpass? That was, is that part of the intertwined track or was that? Yes. Yeah, there was the overpass. Yes. Oh, that's really cool. So it looks like it's, it, were they gas powered cars? Yeah, they were just like the, um, like the, like, antique well, they were, they're like the antique autos. Yeah. I mean, they were, that's really you know, cool. That, that, well, they oh, were really? fun. I mean, it, it was, it was a cool little ride and there was a distinction and there was a difference between this and, uh, you know, less taxes, you know, which were the antique cars back then. So they were, they were really two totally different ride experiences. And, you know, as I mentioned, since I Coney Island, you know, had this attraction, uh, which opened in 1958 there, mm -hmm. um, you know, and it was retrofitted um, at that park with aero development cars in 1966. And then Kings Island's turnpike attraction, you know, had a different layout uh, than the one at Coney Island. Uh, so it was a little bit longer, uh, but uh yeah, I mean, it was when the park first opened, it was one of those, those signature attractions. Yeah, and again, it's uh, probably the first driving experience for a lot of people. I think my first driving experience, if it wasn't this, and I don't distinctly remember riding this, was probably the antique cars. Mm -hmm. um, lots of guardrails with those things, you know, because you can bounce back and forth with that uh, that guide rail in the middle. But I assume this runs on uh, an extremely similar mechanism where it's, you know, it's guided on that center rail and... You know, you go yes. left or right and you're just giving everybody like neck pain by slamming into that thing. But uh, very, very cool. Was this your first driving experience? Yes, it was. Um, I was I was tall enough to, to ride this. Now, a couple of years before, uh, Coney Island, I wasn't tall enough to drive. So I would ride in the car and my sister would normally drive or my dad would drive. Uh, but then at uh, Fantasy Farm, I just missed being tall enough to ride and I was very upset about it. So yeah. I had to ride with my sister again and we came around and, you know, you're coming back into the station and they have the stop sign there, you know, for you to stop. They tell you not to bump anybody. Uh, but being angry, as soon as my sister stopped it, 
I, you know, put my foot on the pedal and <laughs> went, flew forward and just slammed into uh, the car in front of us. People were getting out of the car. And, you know, one of the people, they like fell down and uh, the uh, ride operators, they're all yelling at my sister. <laughs> you know, so I thought that was the best day ever that she was taking the blame for something like that. But no, I mean, my first time I was tall enough to do it was at, was at Kings Island. So uh, in a previous episode, we had people send in their mem their stories, their memories. Everyone assumes for you, it's like, oh, my 10,000th ride on the race or whatever. But you're going to be like, no. One time I rear-ended my sister and she got yelled at for it. And that was the best day of my that life. That wasn't at King's Island. That was at Fantasy Farm, though. But, oh. you know, things like that. It was at Fantasy Farm, you know. But, I mean, it's, yeah, oh, my gosh. You know, you talk about the memories and stuff. It's not those those milestone rides. You remember those. But there are so many other little stories in that, you know, uh, and it all involves different people, you know, not your personal accomplishments. So it's, it's, it's a people, you know, oriented thing for me. Yeah, I think so too. And then, uh, so, uh, it was renamed the final time 1984 to sunshine turnpike retained its name through its closure in 93, uh, in 1995, a new kids area of Nickelodeon splat city opened in its place. So was, uh, was there, when it closed, there was nothing there for a year. Nothing here, but there, but like construction. You know they were you know digging out where that had been and i was um shocked when i came to the park and it wasn't there in 1994. yeah uh th back then you know there wasn't social media you know nothing was said that this is the final rides in 1993 you know like you see a lot of parks doing you know they, they announced two or three weeks before a ride closes that it's being retired. So there was none of that out there. Nobody really knew what was happening. And I went back to that part of the park because I wanted to ride it. And all of a sudden I just saw bulldozers and stuff. And I'm like, what the heck? Uh, so I was very disappointed about that, you know, happening uh, because it was, it was a ride that I always looked forward to, you know, to riding. If I was at the park, you know, say six days a week, you know, five of those days, I was going to take a ride on it. Yeah. They should have let you ride on a bulldozer instead. It's only fair. Yeah. You know, yeah, but so, I remember asking, you know, the PR people at the time and uh, one of her, it was Carolyn Bowes. And I was like, Carolyn, what the heck? You know what happened? She was, oh, yeah, yeah. We, you know, we're making way for future park expansion. You're going to love what we do there. Um, you know, but um, but I miss it to this day. I think it's it's always a nice um, touch. Whenever there's a park that has turnpike cars like this, I want to ride it uh, because it brings back those memories of me growing up at Kings Island. I've always wanted to own a car like these or like a bumper car just to see how, like, if I could take all the governors off, like how fast I can get it to go. Yeah. I'm sure you've thought about that too. Oh yeah. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. I, I, I tried to get one of the cars that wasn't part of the, the turnpike, but I tried to get one of the cars uh, when they had uh, out by son of beast, you know, they had the, the little race cars. Yeah. Um, so I tried to get one of those, but, yeah, I mean, it's it's a fun ride. I think those are the kind of rides, you know, when you think of your traditional amusement parks, you do think of the antique cars, you think of the turnpike cars. And I'd love to, you know, they brought back the antique cars, so why not the, the turnpike cars one day? You know, I think it would be a great fit to put something like that, you know, somewhere in the Coney Mall area, you know, where it would belong. And uh, I think that that would be well-received by Kings Island guests, you know, not the tallest, fastest, you know, ride out there, but still something that, uh, you know, guests of all ages can enjoy. You know, might not be tall enough to, to drive it, but you can still get in, you know, with your, your family member and and uh, and enjoy it. So it's rides like that that, you know, I, I really miss from the early days of Kings Island, you know, in the 70s into the 80s. Um, because it was, you know, when you think of amusement park, you just think of those kind of rides. It's not always the roller coasters. You think of, of those flat rides like that. Yeah, so the ride gave a combined 21,993,078 rides. So close to 22 million. So close. May it rest in peace. So uh, let us know in the comments. Were the Sunshine Turnpike cars or Marathon cars or whatever? They had mm -hmm. several names. Was that your first driving experience? Um, Don, T-shirts. Tower Topics T-shirts. They've become a really hot item. Uh, you can get yours for just $22. They come in a Carolina blue, whatever size you need. It's available. And uh, we ship them out within a matter of days after you make your purchase. Now, how do you purchase one? Uh, it's $22, includes the shipping, and we'll send you a QR code if you just message us on our 
X, which is tower underscore topics. If you don't have X or not on there, you can still find a way to reach out to Ryan or I. You can do it through, you know, our YouTube channel, you know, here. Uh, you can drop in something in the comments, you know, just let us, you know, contact you and, and uh, you know, we'll find a way to get that QR code to you. Perfect. $22, including shipping. All right. Uh, we'll be right back with the listener questions. First listener question, Marty B from Anderson Township. Don, if Six Flags decided to overhaul the Kings Island marketing team, which I think needs to be done, and offered you the opportunity to return and lead PR, would you take it? No. No, I'm really enjoying what I'm doing right now. Uh, you know, that would mean having to give up doing Tower Topics, you know, the Attractions Group podcast, the way we do it now with, uh, you know, guests from the different parks around the industry. Uh, no, very, very content. I had a great, uh, very enjoyable uh, 17 seasons at Kings Island, you know, working in the, the marketing department. Uh, you know, PR, doing social media, the brand journalism stuff with the blog. Uh, but the page has turned, you know, and, and I, I like what I'm doing now. I've had a, a, just a terrific summer. Um, you know, over the last year, there's been a, you know, I've been able to spend so much more time, you know, with my family, uh, spending more time with oh, my yeah. wife. We've traveled to different places. We never got to do that. I was locked down. I had to be at Kings Island all the time. Right. So uh, there's something to be said to, uh, you know, about, you know, kind of uh, doing your own thing. You know, it's a challenge. You know, you have to make things happen, but doing your own thing, uh, but getting up in the morning and deciding what you want to do uh, that day. And, and uh, you know, I, I wouldn't trade the last year, you know, for for the 17 years I had there. It's just been a lot of fun and enjoyable. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, if that opportunity, you know, was presented, uh, you know, no, I, I, I think, uh, you know, my time there, you know, that that passed. So I'm on to the next chapter and, and enjoying it. I think that the the compromise that you should offer them is I'll pick the PR guy for you because we could pick somebody that or well you could pick somebody that you know would be able to work with us and able to work with KI Central and I able think, to work in the past. I year. think too if I was ever, you know, ever to go back into that kind of a chair, you know, doing PR or um you know, marketing, social media, whatever it is, whatever my role was at King's Island, if I was to go back into that kind of situation, I'd want to go to a different kind of park. I'd want to go someplace where you can make an impact. You know, you're, you're not part of a big, gigantic chain. You don't have, you know, 15 layers you got to go through sometimes to, to get stuff done. I'd like to, you know, if I was going to do it again, it would have to be somewhere where you go in every day and uh, you're able to you know, make an impact with the things that you do. So yeah. that would be what that would be what I, I would look for if I ever had to go back into it. Um, and I use that keyword had to because right now I don't have to. I mean, things are going, you know, pretty well with with all the different uh, things that I got my hands in right now. Yeah. And um, it, I, I honestly think because you were definitely bogged down by the bureaucracy the last couple of years that you were there. Uh, that's not getting any better. Yeah, now now it's you know they're merged with Six Flags. It's a much bigger corporation with a much bigger corporation. Um, it's going to run like a much bigger corporation. You know, not to word yeah. salad. A lot, there, of, lot of red tape to go through. Um, you know, to to get some things done, and, and it's it was starting to get that way when I left. I mean, it wasn't as you know what it seems to be like right now with with so many different processes and. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, 15 different people have to look at something before you can do it. You know, it wasn't like that when I was there, but it seems like it is, you know, now some different people that have talked to me have just talked about how, you know, it's so much is being driven from corporate and it's not just the the marketing, you know, side of it. It's, it's the things you see, uh, the different events and things in the park, you know, that used to be created by people on the marketing team. We'd sit in the room, we'd kick around ideas and we'd do something, you know, uh, hey, let's, do a special event, we'd have Knievel, you know, uh, Walenda. Uh, let's do, you know, a daytime event, you know, for the kids. You know, Haunt, we have Haunt, we got the adult thing, let's do something for the kids. We came up with all those things at the park level. Well, now those things are being done at the corporate level and they're being handed down to the park. Yeah. And uh, they're just they're just now executing. They're not the creators, you know, of it. They're not yeah. as involved in it. And that's what I mean about some place where you can make an impact, where it's more rewarding in that. Uh, where you're just not a facilitator, that you actually right. have a chance to make that impact. And it's your ideas and your things that you're rolling out 
Uh, so it'd have to be that kind of a situation. And that's that's not the environment that's there right now. Well, yeah. And if you look at the situation that they're put in on the park level, it's like they got a call one day saying, hey, you're going to do a food and wine festival. And it's like, what? You know, it's um, so it's it's probably very often people that don't know your park and don't know your demographic taking mm -hmm. a wide paintbrush, making a decision. All right. King's Dominion. Well, let uh, me ask you this. Right? And Carowinds, food and wine. Make say it you're out. working at the park. Say you're working at the park in a marketing role mm -hmm. or entertainment, whatever it might be. And you all sit in a room and you come up with the idea and, you know, it's, it's on you to make the event work and you create it and all that kind of stuff. Or you're being told, here's what you're doing. Yeah. Which one are you going to be more excited about? Well, it, it would be very, the mature answer is you should take either one and make it your own. But at the same time, you know, if I'm in a, let's say a marketing role and I'm trying to write the narrative with the press releases or the blogs or whatever, if that's also being handed out from corporate, it's like, what do you want me to do? Cashier this thing out to the media? I mean, yeah, no, no, I, I completely understand where it's coming from. Uh, and that's why, um, you you know, things like the Oktoberfest, that that doesn't seem to being uh, something that's going to transpire at Kings Island. I'm fine with that because if it's just going to be a blanket, generic, black and white printed out event that the park's not excited about, the people aren't excited about, and it's just taking resources away from other places, I just don't want it. You yeah. Know? So like I said, for me to, to get back into it, you know, it would have to be something that, you know, it would have to be a special opportunity and it would have to be something where it's on you you know, to make it happen, you know, you don't have to go through 15 layers to get something done. Yeah. Okay. Next listener question. Dave F from Cincinnati, Ohio. Why aren't the peanuts characters incorporated into the Winterfest parade? Well, the reason they're not is the contract says that the peanuts characters cannot be um, involved with other characters. So at Winterfest, you've got all the, you know, the Winterfest characters, you know, you've got uh, Jack Frost and Scrooge and, you know, some of the other ones and you, the Peanuts characters can't be in that same kind of a setting with them. So that's why they're not part of the, the Winterfest parade. I mean, you would think, you know, with the, the the Charlie Brown, you know, Christmas special and all that, that it's a natural, you know, to have them be in the in the parade. And you go into the uh, you know Planet Snoopy area during Winterfest and, you know, you see the, the characters out there and, you know, the costumes and things they have on. I mean, it's adorable and you'd love to see them out in the parade, but uh, contractually, they're just not able to do that. Yeah, and uh, at least it's not as big of a problem now as it was when they had that commingling of Nickelodeon and Scooby Doo. That way, you talk about two people that weren't allowed in the same place at the same time. Yeah. Um, hence the fact that Boo Blasters is still considered to be on International Street. Um, that's called gerrymandering, Don. That's gerrymandering <laughs> right there. But, yeah, um, but that's the reason. I mean, it's, it, you would think that it would be a natural, but they just can't do it. Yeah. Um, I, I guess they'd have to choose between, but also uh, I, I'm assuming that working with Peanuts International is not unlike working with other IPs where uh, if they did a parade and it was going to be Peanuts involved, Peanuts International would have a lot of say in how the characters are presented and stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's probably just another thing. And honestly, it would be nice to have all. I, I never really thought about it, to be honest with you. I never noticed that the Peanuts characters weren't there. Now that you mentioned it, it'd be cool if they had a Peanuts float at least. But I don't think that the parade is necessarily lacking. I think that the the stars of the show are the the original IP, the Jack yeah. Frost and the yeah, the Tannenbaums and so on. So I, I if I had to choose between the two, I'd want them to be the parade anyway. Right. Cool. Well, that was a lot of talking. Hey. I'm Ryan Sir Longathon Helbig, and this is Tower Topics.